you're the same today as you're in five years except the people you meet and the books you read well this is very prevalent i can compensate with that with the universe 10 billion years ago today we're going to be talking about black holes and not just any black holes the size difference there's primordial there's stellar there is supermassive and there's ultra massive so this is going to be very interesting and let's delve into this right now what's a black hole it's basically a big ball let's take a big black ball let's say uh, Sagittarius A star from the Milky Way now that star no no that black hole if Let's say you jump into it, you will fall, you turn red, you turn invisible, but from your side, you see that space and time warp themselves. Now, what does this mean? Space becomes infinite, time becomes finite. You will be seeing yourself in the future. Now, how cool is that? But you will eventually reach the singularity where everything falls in and you die. As simple as that. Now, what is an accretion disk? An accretion disk is a ring of matter that surrounds the black hole, giving its glowy look. And that's like how neon, neon sign billboards you see out there. Those are like black holes. They're the billboards of the universe. Primordial black holes. Now, what we sh if we ever discover one something as small as this, you will, they will probably be very, very, very old. Let, let's go through the flaps of the universe's book. Now, at least 10 billion years back, you will be seeing any tiny pocket, little bit denser than its neighbors, will turn into a black hole. It can be no bigger than a proton, biggest size can be a coin, it's mass of a mountain, that how heavy it is, and it can bully a star at least the size of a sun. Because now we move on to the stellar black holes. The normal black holes that we know today that actually exist. Some of them biggest are the L33X7. Yes, very weird name, but don't mind it. It starts bullying a star and starts eating it and eating it. It just grows bigger and its accretion disk goes to hundreds of thousands of degrees Celsius, which is just random. Say that, and it is no, it, it is big enough to cast a shadow on Corsica, it's just a, another place on earth. And made a curious gap there are many black holes that are up to 150 solar masses, and we hit a curious scale until we find the biggest black holes in the universe we come to supermassive black holes formed by these quasars. Quasars are the stars that are even bigger than the largest star we know today. And they might also form in the future. But they were only formed when the universe was very, very young, about a third of its size. And it had a black hole for its heart too. And such big stars, the black hole might have consumed it in the inside and become hundreds of thousands of masses, solar masses up to 10 million solar masses at least. So the universe is simply not old enough for, this to, for us to understand how. That curious scale is why, because I guess there were just stellar black holes or supermassive black holes and then finally one fine day CE comes in after the death of Jesus Christ and then we find, oh wow, stellar black holes, they're tiny, yay. And mind you, these black holes can also be a little young, they can be a little old, they're very old actually. They are almost as old as the primordial black holes because they were formed by quasars 10 billion years ago. Yes, that's how old they are. We come to the end of this video, ultra massive black holes. Ultra-massive black holes deserve a category of their own because they have grown to tens, millions, billions, septillions of sizes of our sun, of any other black holes we know today. And they are galaxy killers if they ever needed to die like a supernova. The largest black hole we know today is TUN 618. 
really far away from the universe, not that much. Uh, sorry, space. A uh, little far from us. Yeah. And we reached the end of this video. Okay, trivia time. Like Dr. Binox used to say. You know, light travels in a straight direction. But it takes time to travel. Even the fastest being on the universe can take time to travel. So, when in the 1950s, scientists discovered radio lobes coming from quasars, and that was 10 billion years ago. Imagine what would happen 100 billion years ago. Guys, people in the 1800s must have discovered quasars or other stars that may be even older than the universe. Because there is a star called Methuselah, which is 14.6 billion years old compared to what studies say that it's older than the universe. And I might have a hunch why. Because the universe, there was still hydrogen and helium. It could have formed that star or maybe other stars in parallel universes. Well, it's too deep for that and that's how we know the universe is not too old. It is young on space standard times. And just like the universe expanding, I'm signing off.